Hi guys and welcome to Design Fundamentals Branding and Logos. I'm Ben Griffin and today we're going to look over the entire process of branding and logo design. We're going to look at some specific ways at which you can make people relate to a brand or a logo and we'll also just generally consider what a logo and a brand are. So branding, what is it? Well, it's an emotional response to a corporate identity as a whole. In effect, a brand is more of a concept. Think of it as the companies that you just like, the ones that for some reason you feel drawn to, and that's because on some level their brand appeals to you. But the logo, on the other hand, is part of the brand that is visual. So in, in essence, you can think of it as a logo mark, an icon or a symbol that represents the business. Brands can have an umbrella logo um, and then underneath that you can have children companies that all have their very own. So for example, you've got things like Toots Plus and then Net Toots and PSD Toots. But as a designer, how can you actually shape a brand if it's more of an emotional response, if it's not a physical thing always? Well, it's so much more than just creating a good logo. It's about the business as a whole and making use of all five senses in order to shape the user's experience. As a designer, you may be given responsibility of working with a company to redesign its brand. Now this is quite a loose term and applies over several media. And it's actually your chance to alter someone's perception of a company, the way that they connect with it and, and how they feel about it. It involves the overall design, the name, logo, company slogans, colour schemes, layouts, shop, like actual shop interior designs and exterior signs, the website, all kind of different things. And even now, obviously not part of design uh, field, but there are even scent branding uh, people who create specific smells for shops. If you look at Starbucks, things like that, they pump in a specific smell to really create a brand. So what should a brand be aiming to achieve then? Well, you want to think about awareness. Are customers going to be aware of the brand? And would it be easily recognisable? Is it powerful? And if somebody said, can you remember the name of it? Could they simply just very quickly remember the name? Do things the brand is associated with, do they create um, positive feelings? Does it trigger specific thoughts, perhaps? Is it a negative thing? Do they relate to an industry or one product attraction? When customers are given this, the actual option, do they always think about this brand? Is it above or um, further ahead than other brands? So, for example, if you think about Apple, people lean towards Apple, which is now the biggest computer company because they like it, they prefer it, they're attracted to it. And finally, advocacy, which in essence really is the people self-promote the brand. So again, if you look at Apple, there are people who are so dedicated uh, and follow Apple so strongly that they promote it to their friends, to their family, to their colleagues and try and get other people to proactively purchase those products. Now those are four things that you need to remember when you're when you're designing a brand purely because you want it to hit all those four things you want it to be to the appropriate audience you want it to appeal to them you want them to have a positive feeling about it you want them to be attracted to it and you want them to then go ahead and promote the brand for your for your company without you actually doing anything now that as a designer can be quite difficult because it depends on the product you're being given but you need to extract the very best from the product in order to be able to try and hit those targets. So if you think about specific objectives for a brand, what you want to do with your design is make sure that it delivers the message clearly, that it it shows that the, the firm or the brand is uh, real, it's credible. You want it to connect with the target audience on the level that the client has specified you want it to really motivate motivate the the viewer and you want users to feel trust and loyalty in that brand and that's why 
When you think about companies you like, sometimes you can't explain why. They might be quite bad. They might do negative things. They might be in the news a lot for doing strange or not quite 100% straight cut things. And yet for some reason you still like them. And that's because on some level their brand appeals to you emotionally and has been crafted to do so. Now we've mentioned Apple already, but if we think perhaps about Starbucks, again that's another company that people like. But as a designer, how do you set about making a brand? How do you shape a person's reaction to a company? Because you can't actually be in control of that. Well, you need a really solid brief from the client because you need to find out absolutely everything you can about the company so that then you can go ahead and extract on their strengths. And you want to find out about a company's core values. Now, core values isn't some sort of blue sky term. It's a genuine thing. It's what a company aspires to be. It's the qualities and values of their products and their service. It's their, their kind of mantra or slogan. If we think back to Apple, they they have a mantra that A, they want their products to be the absolute best in the world, and also they want them to be simple. Now, if you look at every Apple pro like project, product, if you look at their websites, their software, applications, the actual user interfaces of the products, the designs of their posters and, and printed media, it's all in the same line as that. Simple, clean. It is Apple, and that's good because it's very, very uniform. You don't actually have to really think, is that an Apple advert? Is that an Apple product? It is, because you can just tell, and that's the way it's all being created. Now, you may well be designing a website, or you could be designing the interior of a shop. So what you want to do is create something that's uniform. It needs to tie in with the company's brand. If we think about Apple, their stores look and feel like an Apple store from the kind of wooden worktops to the, the lit up Apple logo which is present on the shop's walls or on the back of a MacBook Pro. It's all very consistent and uniform and you need to incorporate that into your branding work because it's a must uniformity. You don't want to, anything to be contrasted or suggest that very little thought has been put into it simply because you think it looks cool or it's just been included because it's different. You want it all to be consistent, following the same style, and that's what your design should be like because when you're creating a brand, it isn't just going to be a website. It isn't just going to be a business card. It's going to be a whole host of different medias. And also, even if you are just working on a website design, you need to make sure that your design fits in with the company's brand. So understanding their core values, taking a look at the their objectives and also their design and and the style of their work will also help you to be able to create a design that looks and works well for their audience. Now let's think about logos very briefly. If you break down the branding process into its simplest form, you've got a business name, a logo and a slogan. Now logos are very important because they are the visual sort of cue that people get for a company. Um, a good logo can be recalled very quickly and somebody could even just draw it out without even thinking about it, without having seen it recently. And it, it's easy just to bring back to a viewer's mind. So let's break down the logo design process into some smaller sections and we're going to look at font selection and colour selection. We're going to look at actual psychology of font selections and colour selections. So let's have a think about font selection. Now, people have actually researched the uh, psychology of fonts and they've worked out that certain fonts say certain things to people. So for example, Georgia or Times New Roman, they are a very traditional, old school font and they show reliability. They show that a company, or it implies a company, can be trusted. Um, it's very corporate, very legal. So you'll often find it used in, in things like solicitors' logos, in lawyers' logos, in newspaper uh, headlines and, and logo design there. 
it's a very trustworthy font but it doesn't really give very much away so when you think again about maybe Helvetica um, or another sans serif font these fonts give off more of a, a modern clean trendy look so again you can see Helvetica used by um, Apple see it used by hairdressing companies fashion companies that kind of thing so if you were to just randomly pick a font potentially it might not suit your brand so what you want to do is actually sit down with your client work out what image they want to project and then do some research on online it doesn't necessarily have to be printed in black and white that oh um vedana is ideal for or comic sans should be used for do research and look at other companies and see what fonts they're using uh, obviously not just to copy them but you can actually tell from competitors things like that the sort of image they're projecting and the fonts that they are using now in general if you're getting a little bit stuck kind of curvy fonts and more round fonts appeal to women and sharper harder fonts appeal to men and that's just a generalization that this study found um, and again serifs such as you'll find on times new romans kind of offer an old trustworthy feel and again as we mentioned they're used by things like solicitors so that's a sweeping generalization but what you can see is that font style actually does affect people subconsciously without them realizing and again you can exploit that and use that in your logo design and another thing you can make use of is color selection and theory now you may not have either, even ever really considered this you might just think when you're designing oh I like them colors or you might use a website like Adobe Cooler to pull together contrasting or complementary uh, color palettes but you can actually use colors again to create an emotional connection or reaction on some level within somebody's mind so logo design is a brilliant way or a brilliant area to make use of that and if you google color psychology you'll find out all kinds of information about specific colors but if we just take two um, black what that conveys to people is authority and power it's uh, very popular in fashion um, because it makes people actually look thinner interestingly but it's also stylish and timeless they say that certain colors are the new black but that's because black is modern and cool and authoritative and powerful it's a very heavy color and then another example if you were to use purple in a logo design it's traditionally the color of uh, royalty and it's quite it was always quite rare in nature it was difficult to make so it was used by monarchs and things like that which then again has, has followed on and now we perceive that as a, a luxurious wealth or sophisticated color it's also quite a feminine color and romantic um, but again because it's rare sometimes it can appear a little bit artificial depending on the tone of the color and you can actually use that process with all of your designs it doesn't just have to be logos but it will help you shape a real brand into different audiences and to appeal to different people but just one last thing to remember when you are working with colors in your logos they can have different meanings in various cultures so again that's going to mean it just highlights the the importance of a good brief so you can find out about your target audience if you're designing a logo that's going to be used across several countries or internationally you need to make sure that actually it's going to appeal to everybody which can be difficult but bear in mind that perhaps in some western societies the colors or the meaning of colors can be very different for example if you take blue and pink now traditionally in in England blue is a boys color and pink is a girls color but actually before the Second World War that was reversed and pink was actually given to um, young boys because it was more of a, an angry color it was closer to red which is quite a, a macho color than it was to other colors and blue was seen as a bit more of a girly color 
So you can see how actually color theory can change. So it's best to check up and keep on top of that and make sure that actually in the target markets you're designing the logo for, it's going to be a suitable use of color. So your logo mark, that's literally just a symbol. Um, and when you're designing that, if you keep five things in mind, you really, really can't go wrong. You want it to be simple. You want people to be able to remember it. You want it to be future proof because when you look at all the best logos, a lot of them are over 50 years old. And that just shows that actually a good logo is timeless. You want it to be useful. You want it to be able to be able to use in print, adverts, websites, and for it to be easily seen and not be affected by how it's displayed and you want it to be appropriate to your audience which again you're going to rely on your brief to find out who your audience is and to be able to design it for them so in this lesson we've looked at the difference between a brand and a logo we've considered what a good brand and a logo should do and we've looked at color and type psychology so your assignment for this lesson is to work on a mock logo slash branding project you want to define the core values for your company that you're going to design the logo for, the audience and also the clientele of the brand, and then use appropriate typefaces, colors, and overall design to appeal to them. 